Fosdom 2017 distribution. Dev room. We have Christian Brookmeyer, and he will be presenting. He didn't put up a time slot for me. <laughs> Sorry. Continuous integration with the Open Health Service. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry. So I would like to start my presentation with a short live demo. I'm not sure if it will, will work um, because in the it, I only have 20 minutes time, so in the past it took around 15, 20 minutes. So I'm not sure if it will finish in the end. So I have a repository on GitHub created, and I will just it's a simple Hello World program. So I will just change it to Hello Distro Dev Room. So and commit it. So and in the end I can show you that um, we have a new Linux distribution created and with, a, with my package installed already. So um, I'm from OpenSUSE. I work at SUSE in the build solutions team, so I'm, um, we work mostly on the um, open build service. And some of you may notice that we brought our own beer to our booth, so you can buy it at our booth. Cheers. Cheers. Any, anybody thirsty? <laughs> no. Um, so I wanted to start my presentation um, with some comparison to brewing beer. So why it's important to have quality assurance <laughs> okay. I tried it this morning. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, so what, what can possibly go wrong? So, if you work for a brewery and you have to be you're in charge of the quality of your beer, then and you don't have automatic testing, then you have to taste it yourself, and you're constantly drunk probably. So you. If your beer is not, not good, so you get bad publicity, so nobody will buy your beer, nobody wants to drink it. And because it's food, so government is involved, so they will probably give you some fine, and eventually they will close your brewery. Uh, which means, um, so they will for sure close it if the beer is so bad that people get sick from, from drinking it. So what happens in the end? Sale, sales decrease, costs increase, and you're broke. So how is this related to software? So in software it's also important to have high quality and how do, you, how do we measure quality in, in software? So one measurement is that um, the software should meet all your requirements, uh, which also means it should be free of bugs, so software failures. And how do we make sure that we don't introduce bugs? So I would like to to cite Martin Fowler, maybe some of you know him, he published some, some famous books. So continuous integration doesn't get rid of bugs, but it does make them dramatically easier to find and remove. So, and this is my topic of my talk, continuous integration with the open build service. Um, so what I will talk about. Um, this is basically the workflow I want to show you. So in the, in the right corner you see uh, it, maybe some of you uh, coding and pushing your, your code constantly to the upstream repository. Could be GitHub or some other favorite, um, favorite source control management system. So from the, from the repository, we want to get the code into the build service, which automatically builds uh, binaries for us. So for instance, RPM packages, Debian packages, which you can install then on your favorite distributions. <coughs> and so the next step, what, what we would like to do is build out of all of out these um, packages, uh, complete, a complete Linux image. So for instance, an ISO or a raw image. So and with my raw image, I would like to, to be able, every time I build a new package and get a new distribution, I would like to be able to see if this image still works. So that uh, all the packages are installed, it boots correctly, um, the services are running, um, and get some feedback in the end. So yes, it works, or no, it, it doesn't work anymore. So how can 
the build servers and the tools that we use. For instance, we use OpenQA to test the distributions, so the, the full stack. Um, how can help it? So, um, the build service is, so why, why do you need the build service? It's, um, so you as a software developer shouldn't care about um, distributing your software to different, uh, different distributions to different um, architectures. You should just care about your source code and then push it to the build service and get a new package, for instance, for OpenSUSE, for OpenSUSE Leap, or Tumbleweed, or Fedora. So this is the only thing what you should care about. So in the build service helps here. So you just push your, your code and your spec files or your, your package description to the build service and it automatically creates um, all the specified binaries for you. So you get out different architectures, you get out different um, distributions. And furthermore, if some of your depend dependencies change, it will rebuild all your, all your packages. So if one package relies on, on one other and this get, gets rebuilt, it will rebuild the whole chain. Um, furthermore, you can in the build service collaborate. So imagine like uh, GitHub. So if you, if you have a bug in a package, you can fork it, fix it, and submit it back. So like you would do it with code on GitHub. So that is one of our main features. So the first step is how do you get your code into the repository. Um, you, you all work in free software development, so I will leave out this step. You all know how to get code into your GitHub or Git repository. The next step is how, to get, how do we get the code from the repository to the build service. So in the build service, everything is, everything is, um, so the main structure is you have a project and inside your pro project you have different packages. So for instance, here you have an applications project with a sub-project popular, and then you would have a Jim or a Firefox package. So this is basically the Hello World project I showed you in the beginning. And so how do we get it now into the build service? So the main feature what we use here is services. So services is like you know, some, um, you can trigger a service to modify, to change, um, to update your source files. And we have, for instance, a task service which will trigger, which you can trigger and it will automatically download your source files from, the build, from GitHub, repacks it and commits it to the, to the build service. So that you get with, so that you get automatically a new um, RPM package built. So there's another service, for instance, a set, ver set version, which will automatically update your um, your package description with the actual with the correct version. So and how do you trigger? In GitHub, we have a really nice feature. Um, so there is. A GitHub hook already in, built in, in in GitHub. So you just have to specify your token of the project and specify the, there's already a default instance of the build service specified, but you can enter some other. So if you want to host your own build service instance, you can enter this one. So that means if you, if you set up this with every commit you do to your GitHub or some other SCM management system, um, you get the source code committed to the build service, which will automatically trigger a rebuild of your package. So we have the first, the first two steps. The third step is actually automatically built in the in the build service. So I don't need to to talk much about this one because um, as soon as you as you change your sources, it, it will trigger the rebuild anyway. But how do we get out of the packages now a uh, complete Linux distribution? So like an ISO image or a raw image. So in OpenSUSE, we use Kiwi, which is a Perl command line tool to automatically build um, a fully complete Linux distribution. Um, so we have 
We use it at SUSE to build all of our SUSE Linux Enterprise and also in OpenSUSE to build all our um, OpenSUSE releases. So we have two versions now. We have the old version, which is in Perl written, and a new version, which is now in, in Python rewritten, um, which we use from, from the next OpenSUSE release on. So and how does it work? You have basically, you have your package sources, which are in the build service anyway, so you all your packages, and then you have a image description which will contain all the repositories, um, all the packages you want to install, um, all users for instance. You can specify config files to override, you can specify shell scripts to be executed while building the, the image. Um, so this is basically an image description, so the most important file is, is the config XML, which is a um, configuration file, which contains all the stuff I already mentioned. Then you have images and config shell script, which, is, um, which are two shell scripts which get executed. And then you have a root, root directory, which just gets copied over your root directory, to, and you can use it to overwrite files. So, do you need to write all of this from scratch? No. Um, so we have in, so what we noticed that many people use SUSE Studio, which is uh, our, from, from SUSE, an online tool to create image description and images. So many people configured their, uh, their image in SUSE Studio, exported all the files and imported it into the build service. So and we wanted to get rid of this step, so we included now the base image description. So on the main page, you just go to new image. And then we have some pre-selection of base images. You select it, and then you get the pre-configured um, image description. So that is what we have now is step one two, three, and four. So the last step is now, how do we get the, how can we boot the image, test it, and check if it still does what it should do? So there is OpenQA. Um, some of you may um, went to the talk this morning from Richard, so we already showed some, some stuff about OpenQA which is our uh, distribution test system which we use for Tumbleweed for SUSE Linux Enterprise. So every, um, every Tumbleweed release that we do gets, uh, before we release, gets tested with OpenQA. And OpenQA is basically, you have a web front end which has a database and then you have several workers and which run the OS auto installer and which run different tests. So this, um, there's several backends. For instance, we use mostly we use QEMO to boot the images and run the tests. And but you can also have on real hardware via IPMI or with a libvirt. So the web front end looks like this. That was yesterday evening. So I tried some stuff. Everything failed. So uh, I hope that my other build will will now finish. So. How do the tests look like? So you have, um, it's basically written in Perl, so you can write in the test everything what you can do in Perl. And we have some macros, like for instance the asset screen here. And it specifies a needle, which is bootloader, and a time, the 30 seconds. So the bootloader um, is, is a needle, and it's needle it's called because finding the needle in the haystack. Um, and when you run the first time the test, OpenQI will stop in the, in the web UI and will ask you, I don't, I don't know this needle, do you want to create it? And then you go to the interactive mode and it shows you the output of the screen and then you can, um, with, a, with a, a selector, you can select what do you want to see, what do you want to check on the screen. So it does basically fuzzy image comparison um, and checks if, if there's some major changes. So here, the, here you see the boot menu in, in Grub, and I wanted to check that there is the, the first boot option, Hello Foster, um, still there. So I created here the needle, and then it, it runs through. 
So that was basically a, a, about the main workflow what, what we have in, in the, for the continuous integration. So what is next in the in, in build service? We prepare actually a new release, which we will re release around um, February or mid-February. So which will basically include the images feature, what I already showed you. Um, so that was to, that you can create some base images, which you just need to, to adapt a little bit. And the next feature is the multiple p package. So that means that you can, inside a package, you can build several binaries out of it. So you don't need, it was already possible before, but you needed to, to create some links between packages, and this is now built in. Um, we use it, for instance, for our ARM, ARM images. Mm -hmm. So we have a base image description, and then we apply several patches to the, to the different boards. So we have one package container, but inside we build many different images for the different boards, like Raspberry Pi or Banana Pi. Um, so I hope that my build is done yet. So No. So that is that is my build from yesterday evening. But I can show you this this one. So here you see the test result, and you see all the needles I created. So as you see here, I checked for the Hello Fostem. So that is my Hello World program, and here you see my <coughs> bootloader, which checks here 100% match, and it also creates you, for instance, a video. Let me check. So you see here every, all the steps that got executed from um, from my test. So if you if something goes wrong and you want to compare, you just go to the page, watch the video, and see okay what what went wrong. And also, if for instance a needle doesn't match, it compares. Um, it shows you the new image and says what is different and then do you want to update the needle or do you want to have a different needle or is it, is it really uh, a failure so that you can report it. So. So we have uh, a booth here, which is in this building downstairs on, on the right. You can see my green arrow in the, in the right corner. So if you have questions, just drop by and we can show you also some more examples, how it works, how we use it for OpenSUSE to test it. Um, we can also show you the build service if you, and otherwise I'm basically done. So, five minutes? So, yeah, if you want me to write me an email or you can find me on, on GitHub or Twitter. Yeah. Two questions about the source service. Does it support other conversion control systems than Git? And yeah, it um, it's, it's supports um, Subversion, for instance, a Mercurial. Um, and it's so the source service, the code is on GitHub. So if you want to have support for another system, just send a pull request and we will include it. Okay. Uh, it's a question. Um, as far as I know, the build service usually takes a tarball from somewhere and you need to maintain the spec file within your package. Yeah. Is it possible to use the source service to download the spec file from a remote repository as well? Uh, I haven't tried this, but I know that, for instance, some colleagues do um, maintain their Kiwi, for, uh, so their Kiwi descriptions um, in, in GitHub. Um, but I don't know if you can pull it completely, so the spec file too. So. Yeah. 
how does it generate a version number for the package that comes from source control? Uh, you, spe you can specify it. So there's um, you saw the XML file, so that was just the base option, but you can specify more options. So you can, for instance, uh, set in the Unix timestamp or the Git version, or you just hard code it and say it should be um, 2.3 and then increment. So there are options to specify the versions. Yeah. Uh, from that. Sorry? Yeah. Okay. You, you spoke about OpenSUSE and uh, OpenSUSE images. Yeah. Since OBS supports the packages, are you able also to produce? Yeah. Yeah. Images? So you can also with Kiwi. Sorry? Um, the question, question was if it's possible to also build with Kiwi other distributions than OpenSUSE, right? Yeah. Um, yes, you can also build um, Red Hat, um, you can build Fedora. So, but that are the only two I know so far. Not the base, not with the template. Ah, no, no. <coughs> ah, sorry. Um, is there any control when your service is pulling uh, new code? Uh, you spe yeah, it's it's specifically uh, it's a REST API, so you you send and say trigger service to run it, and what we what we did in in GitHub, we included so you can send pull requests to GitHub to include a service, so they have also hooks. So every time when you commit to the master or some branch, it will it can send a, a REST call an API call and yeah. which triggers the the service run. Yeah, that's that's where my question comes from. Um, Maybe you don't want to build a package every time you push something to, to the master. Yeah. So maybe so you want to wait until a certain point where you um, build a new release, for instance, and you want to patch it and stuff. Um, so in, in, in the GitHub service, you can also specify the target. So you can say only on master or only on this branch or only when you tag some, if you, if you create a tag in the, in the GitHub branch. So that you can specify it in, in GitHub when you want to trigger. And are there plans to expand on, on other uh, platforms like uh, Debian package-wise? Uh, Deb Debian is already supported in the build service, but not in the Kiwi. So the, uh, you can build the packages, but you can build the, the image. Oh. Mm. Thank you. Thanks.